Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the unit on conic sections. This is one of the units in pre-calculus. We are going to be going through this entire unit test, going through all of these questions so that you understand how to approach and solve these questions. With that, let's get started on our first question. A hyperbola centered at the origin has vertices at 0 plus or minus square root of 54 and foci at 0 plus or minus square root of 89. Okay, what does that tell us? What do we know with that? Well, we're trying to find the equation of the hyperbola. Let's see what we can do. So we know that in a hyperbola, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a is the distance along the major axis, b is the distance along the minor axis, and c is the distance from the foci to the um, center, the vertex. Now, since we're at zero here for both of these, we're Zero is the x-coordinate of the center. And the plus or minus, well, that signifies that the center is in the middle, which is still zero. Meaning that A here, this is the major axis. Well, we don't know that, but this could be the major axis or the minor. So A squared is 54. The C squared right here is going to be 89, meaning that B squared is going to be 89 minus 54, which is going to be 35. Right, 35. And a squared is bigger than b squared, so a squared is going to be the major axis. Okay, so what does that tell us? What do we know then? Well, we know that the y, the, the y direction is going to be the one that it has the major axis. So we're going to put y over 54 first. And we're going to subtract that by x squared over the, mi the minor axis squared, which is going to be 35. That's supposed to equal 1. Okay, does this work? Well, it has vertices at 0 plus or minus 54. If you plug that into this equation that we've just written here, you do get 1 in both scenarios. Okay, now if you try to plug in, you can try to find other numbers along this. But the main idea here is that you have the y squared and x squared. The one that has, the one that's first, right, is the one that's going to have the larger denominator, the major axis. The one that you're subtracting is going to be the minor axis, the smaller one. And of course, you found 54, they told us that, um, in the major axis, and then 35 is a result of using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now remember, this is only for hyperbolas. Right? It might look similar to like the Pythagorean theorem, but this is a specific thing to hyperbolas. Right? For, for uh, say, ellipses, for example, there are different. there's a different formula that we'll have to learn. So this is the equation for hyperbolas, this is how we find it, and we can move on to the next question. All right. Write the equation of the ellipse graphed below. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we can see that the center here is going to be 4 and 4. All right, 4, 4. Well, how are we going to get it across now? So we have y, or we really don't know which one is first. It doesn't really matter because in the ellipse, you're adding them together. So x minus 4, right, squared, squared. And that's going to be over, it's going to be over, the length of the major axis, right? Now, in this scenario, what does it look like, the major axis? I mean, the or just the axis in general uh, um, for the x-coordinate? Well, we can see here that it looks like it's only 3, so that's going to be 9, right? 3 squared, it gives 9, right? Because you have from 1 to 4. Now, if you add that to your y minus 4 squared, right? Because y, the coordinate, the y-coordinate for the for the center is also 4, and then you have a minor, a major axis of 4 right there, so that's going to give you 16, and that's supposed to equal 1. Right, does that give you something that you want? Let's see. Here you have 4, 0. If you plug that in, right, if you plug that into there, what do you get? Well, the first term cancels out, the second term gives you 4 squared over 16 equals 1. That is what you want. Now you can come over here, you have 1, 4. Wait, is that what you want? If you plug in 1 and 4, well, the second term cancels out, the first term becomes negative 3 squared over 9. That is also 1, so that is what we want, and that is our correct equation here. Right now, notice we didn't have to use the foci, and there might be situations that we'll, where we will need to do that, and we might see them later. But for this one, they gave us the ellipse, we didn't need to do anything else. So let's move on. Okay. Plot the foci of this ellipse. Okay, now we got to deal with this with the foci. All right, here's a different color. 
All right, so we see that um, our center is zero. Oh, God. Can't draw on the graph. The center is going to be zero, two. Center is zero, two. And it goes up to zero, 15, which means that the one of the axes length is going to be 17. The other one goes across here, or from zero, negative two to 15, negative two, so that is going to be length 15. Okay. So now what do we know? Well, the 17 one goes in the y direction, so that's going to be like, um, or really, we don't even need to find this because this I was going to be finding the equation. We can do that. We can do like y minus, uh, y plus 2 technically because y minus negative 2 for the vertex, y plus 2 squared over like 17 squared plus x minus 0, so x squared over 15 squared, and that would equal 1. And you could do that if you wanted, but you really don't have to. Right now, with the foci of ellipses, the rule here is that c squared equals a squared minus b squared, where a squared is the major axis. So 17 squared minus 15 squared, and take the square to that. Now, you might not know this, but um, this is actually a Pythagorean triple. It's 8, 15, and 17. So, of course, c is going to be 8. If you don't believe me, you can plug in the numbers. 17 squared is 289. Uh, 15 squared is 225, you subtract those and you get 64. The square of 64 is 8. So we have 8. We're going 8 out from the from the center, from 0, negative 2. Now, which direction do you go in? Well, you go in the direction of the major axis. The major axis goes up and down. All right, so you are going to be going up from 0, negative 2, go up to 6. And then you have another one. You can go down 8 from here, and you get to negative 10. Those are your two foci. And that is it for this question. Let's move on. OK. Write an equation for the left centered at the origin, which has foci at plus 3, plus minus 3, 0, and covertices at 0, plus, uh, 0 comma, plus minus negative, plus minus 4. OK. So we, we have an ellipse centered at the origin, right? So we can, we can just say x squared over something we don't know yet, plus y squared over something which we also don't know yet, is going to equal 1. And that, that's kind of the base. Right? That's kind of the skeleton of this ellipse formula. right? And we don't have to put the x minus something or the y minus something that's at the origin. So it's x minus 0 and y minus 0, which, of course, is just x and y. OK, now we know that the foci is at plus or minus 3, 0, which is an x coordinate is the one that's not a 0. Right, the x-coordinate is the one that's going out from the, the center, meaning that the x is going to be the major axis. All right, so that means uh, you have your um, you have your a squared minus b squared equals c squared. All right, so b is going to be 4 here. That's the minor axis. c is 3. You might recognize this Pythagorean triple. a is going to be 5. All right, so a squared is 25, so that goes here. b squared is 16, four, which is 4 squared, so that's going to go here. And of course, three not, or not uh, nine. That's going to be our foci, and we can keep going. All right. Now we're given the equation of an ellipse, given below. All right. Now we're asked for its center, right? So x minus one. So that's going to be one. Y minus one. That's going to be one. What is its major radius? Well, let the bigger one take the square root. That's five. Minor radius. Take the bigger one. I mean, take the smaller one. Take the square root. It's four. Right not much to it and now we start to, we stop talking about ellipses and we go back to hyperbolas right there are many different types of conic sections right? there are hyperbolas ellipses circles parabolas technically have, um, a conic section right and here we're going to talk about hyperbolas again right, so what are the foci of the hyperbola represented by the equation x squared over 64 minus y squared over 32 equals one okay what are we going to do here well the first thing we do is we find the center all right, the center is 0, 0. Kind of obvious, right? Usually it's going to be 0, 0. Sometimes it's not. Usually it will. But it is just a very useful strategy to figure that out, like, right at the, at the start, right? Because if you know that, like, with these foci, right, I can figure out, like, all I want to with the arithmetic and, like, which which directions that goes in. But if I don't know where it starts, that's not going to tell me anything, is it? All right? So that's why I need the 0, 0, the origin, where it starts. Now, with the hyperbola, the, the rule of the foci, is that it's a, uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. OK, so this, uh, the, this is a squared 64. The b squared is 32. You add them up, 
take the square root, that's going to be the square root of 96. Okay, so you're going 90, square root of 96 in two directions from the origin. So you have two choices. You have B and D. They both they switch which way you're going in. Right now, which way do you go in on hyperbola? You go in the direction of the major axis. The direction of the major axis is going to be in the x direction. Okay, so you're going to end up with square root of 96, 0, and negative square root of 96, 0. You're not going to end up with like 0 square root of 96 because that goes up. That doesn't go to the side. All right, so this is our answer. And we can move on. All right, now as a quick note, if you're wondering how to remember like the formulas for the foci, the way I like to remember is that it's the opposite of how it's represented in the formula. So in a hyperbola, you have this minus sign right here, right there. In the center, you have a minus sign. And for this, you add up a squared and b squared, right? Now in an ellipse, you add the two terms in the middle, right? This would be like a plus sign if it was an ellipse. You add them up. And here, in the in this formula for um, finding the foci, you would subtract them if it was an ellipse, right? So if it's an ellipse, you have a plus sign in the equation, and you have a negative sign for the foci. Swap. If, you, if it's a hyperbola, you have a negative sign for the equation and a plus sign for the, um, for the foci. So if you're given an equation of something with a plus sign in there, you know that the foci is going to be a negative sign because you switch it. Right now, if you have an ellipse and a hyperbola and you're trying to figure out which one it is, that, that's, you just kind of have to memorize that, right? Ellipse is positive, hyperbola is negative. Right now, the way you can remember that is by the fact that an ellipse like looks... Like generally, like it looks like a circle, right? Like it's just a uh, dilated circle, just a little bit, and that's gonna that's gonna be its plus. Right? And a hyperbola like is like insane, right? Like you're going in like various different directions and whatnot, and that is because of the negative sign, right? So if you can think about the positive sign being the regular thing and the negative sign being like the, the way crazy insane thing, then you'll be fine with this. All right, that was that was that question. Let's keep going. Equation of an ellipse given below, what is the foci of the ellipse, right? We just talked about this. There's a plus sign there, going to be a minus, so c squared is going to be 67 minus the 57, or 10. 10. All right, now which direction does it go in? Well, the x1 is the one with the bigger, so it's going to go in the x directions. Right now, um, it's going to be 10 or square root of 10. It's going to be the square root of 10, because c squared is 10. So c is square root of 10. So square root of 10 in the, both the x and y directions, or not the, not the x and y directions, the positive x and the negative x directions is not going in the y directions because that's not the major axis. Right? Major axis, minor axis, this actually makes a difference. And it's really not that even hard. Right? 67 is bigger than 57. That's it. Major axis, right there. It's not that bad. Right? I know it seems like there are tons of rules to memorize, but if you understand why the rules are there, Right, like a why, what makes an ellipse have that kind of plus sign? What makes an ellipse the foci like that? If you think about it that way, which we're not going to cover in this video, but like you can obviously look it up on the internet and find so many different resources about why ellipses are the way they are and why hyperbolas look insane. And that will help you understand how this works. I'll help you understand the rules and you won't have to memorize them anymore. All right, with that said, let us keep going. Next question, which of the following graphs can represent the hyperbola y squared over 64 minus x squared over 36 equals 1? All right now, in this situation, most of you might just be like tempted to like look at each graph and find the differences and match it up, but I like to just look at that equation and figure out a couple different attributes that I can then narrow down on the graph. So I look at the equation first and then the graphs because the graphs are complicated, right? Graphs have like so many different things going on at the same time, right? Like looking at this first graph with A, Right, there are there's like so much going on. Like it's vertical and it has four negative four and like you can find like a thousand different points on it. There are look at the equation. It's it's not that bad. It's not that hard to just look at the equation first. Major axis. It's bigger, sixty-four. The major axis is going to be in the y direction. Right? That means the hyperbola is gonna be in the y direction. It's gonna be vertical. So we can write that down. Vertical. Vertical. Where is it going to be at? Well, the square root of 64 is 8, so it's going to be 0, 8, and 0, negative 8. Remember, we're starting from the origin and going out. And that's kind of all we need to know, right? We have uh, vertical and 0, 8, 0, negative 8. 
This goes to forward negative four. Nah, this is not even vertical. This is also not vertical. And then this has our eight and negative eight. So that is our correct answer. And now we can keep going. All right. Now we have, well, now we're asked to write the equation of the hyperbola graph below where the vertices and foci are marked. All right, this is really nice, right? Because we've looked through a couple of questions now. Uh, like actually like the, the entire test has kind of just been hyperboles versus ellipses trying to like getting the equations trying to figure out what you can from the equations trying to write the equation and this is just one simple problem where they're giving us one graph couple points and you have to find the hyperbola from that but it's a very good exercise to do this because it helps you understand the core parts of the equation it helps you understand what makes up a hyperbola why is the hyperbola look like that why is this why do we write it like this? All right, and this is what we're going to do now. All right, so we obviously see that you're at 10 and you're at negative 10. All right, so the center is in the middle, 0, 0, and the, um, the vertices are 10 out, up and down, the y directions. So that is another clue that we have. Okay, so we're going to have y squared right, over 10 squared, so 100. And that's going to be subtracted, subtracted by x squared over something. Now we got to figure out what that something is. Hyperbola, remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is going to be 10, 10 squared. Oops, did not mean to make my picture bigger. 10 squared plus the b squared is going to equal whatever the foci is squared. Now if you look at that, look like, that looks like 26, 26 squared. All right, now some of you might recognize this. This is like the 5, 12, 13 triple if you doubled all the numbers. Right? And if you don't believe me, you can pull out a calculator. Right? You're allowed to use a calculator. You can pull out a calculator. 26 squared is 676. 10 squared is 100. You subtract that 576, which is 24 squared. Right? Um, you, can, you can fact check that if you want. I'm not going to tell you not to, but like this, this is the Pythagorean triple. It's, it's going to be very good if you memorize these basic ones, right? 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 20, 21, 29. Those are kind of like four, four basic ones. Memorize them, memorize them if you want to buy them by two or three or four on and on, and that, that'll help you. All right, so we have 24 squared here for B. 24 is B. 24 squared is 576. 576 goes right there. And that is our that is our graph. And now we can write that down. All right, minus x squared over five hundred seventy six is going to equal one. And that is it. All right, that is our equation. Now, some of you might be wondering about why, like, the one under the x squared is bigger than the one under the y squared. When I kind of said earlier that the one that's bigger is the major axis and it's going to go in that direction. And you'd, be, you'd definitely be right for like thinking that because like it doesn't make sense if you think about it. Now, the thing is, is that when I was talking about that, I was talking about ellipses, ellipses, where you're adding them together, right? Now, the thing about ellipses, when you're adding, like think about addition in general, is that it doesn't matter what order you put it in. It's going to be the same, all right? So no matter what order you put it in, it's going to be determined where the, the foci are based on which one's bigger, okay? Because that's the major axis. For this, it matters which one is going first, right? Because think about it this way, right? No matter what I put in for x, no matter what I put in for x, I can never get it to be equal to 1. I can never get the left side equal to 1 if y is like 0, say, right? Because if like y is at the center, right, then that becomes 0. You can never get x squared, negative x squared over 576 to equal 1 because something squared is positive. Right? So that's never going to equal 1, right? because that's going to be negative. And that's why the second term is never going to be the one that's on the major axis. It doesn't matter how big the number is. The fact is that you're subtracting it. Right? The, th the thing we know about this thing, the reason it's the major axis is because here you have these vertices. Those vertices, if you plug them in, you will get 1. Right? The vertices are essentially saying to one of the coordinates, we don't need that coordinate. That's going to be zero anyway. We don't need it. And it's going to figure out the other one to equal one by itself. All right, that is how these coordinates work. That is how an hyperbola, a hyperbola of the vertices work. 
Now, if you're if you have you're trying to use the one that's the subtractive one, that's not gonna work. That okay? So for an ellipse, the major axis is going to be the one that is bigger under the denominator. For hyperbola, it's just gonna be the one that's first, the one that is positive. All right, and then the minor axis is gonna be the one that you're subtracting. Whereas an ellipse, the minor one is going to be the smaller one, right? Just the smaller one under the square. So that was it for this topic. We didn't really cover parabolas or circles, but that has been ex that's been extensively covered in like say, geometry and algebra two. So you should know all about that already. Right? This is hyperbolas and ellipses mainly. We learned a lot about the equations, about what makes them up. If you still have questions, please feel free to look it up to learn more about what makes these things look the way they do, why we write this the way they do. But this is it for the section on conic sections, and I'll see you next time when we continue looking at more topics in pre-calculus. I'll see you then.